Welcome to this lecture on Christianity and social issues in which we talk about how people of faith and ministers on behalf of the kingdom can engage with some of the main social conversations around us. And as again, we look at the Wesley Quadrilateral as this methodology with which to engage in these issues, studying with scripture, we see that among the things that scripture teaches is that as believers, we are meant to be part of a different kind of kingdom that is independent from the kingdoms of this world. So however we think about engaging in the social issues of our day, whether it be reconciliation conversations or whether it be sexuality conversations, uh, political conversations, conversations on war, anything along these categories, we need to understand that Paul writes the idea that our citizenship is in heaven. And we really are only able to, to live from one kind of kingdom at a time. So we live within the kingdoms of this world. But the scriptures are teaching that we're actually citizens of heaven, which is why Peter and John end up saying things like in the book of Acts, we must obey God rather than men. Now, some would suggest as well that we need to obey our earthly powers based on the book of Romans. And there's, I have some sympathy for that point of view, but in looking at that passage of scripture itself, Paul seems to be writing specifically to the Roman people who were under a significant threat of persecution at that time. And so he's basically saying, just keep your heads down, listen to the authorities. If you pop up like this, they're going to kill you. And so he wasn't making some long-term command that you're supposed to be subject to the authorities of this world. He was simply saying at a, at a period of time, just keep yourself safe <laughs> in these moments. And so the scriptural witness is that however we engage with the conversations of our day, we need to make sure that we avoid blending the social values of the day with the values of the kingdom and be clear-eyed in our approach to understand what the kingdom is inviting us into as citizens of heaven. Now, from a tradition standpoint, in terms of engagement, there's probably four different categories in which the church has historically tried to engage with these issues, and it's descending a little bit from the Jewish sects of Jesus' day. There was four different Jewish groups in terms of how they interacted with the government of that day. The first group were the Pharisees, who decided their main philosophy for dealing with the government was to separate out from it, but still live within it, and live a different way of life within the government itself, pretending not to have anything to do with the government and, and, uh, and acting in a different way, separating out, obeying Jewish law in the midst of Roman occupation. Along with the, the Pharisees were the Sadducees. The Sadducees had a different kind of approach. They decided to work within the government itself on behalf of the people. So you can probably see both approaches today to some degree where certain religious groups will want to kind of stand apart but still be within a bit. And you have other groups uh, of religious organizations that say our best way to affect social change on behalf of the kingdom is actually to get involved in government. Another tradition from back in Jesus' day would have been the Essene tradition. And the, the Essenes went ahead and just sort of extracted themselves from a society. They lived in caves. They saw their role as preserving what had been and stop it from being sullied by the culture around them. So the Essenes were maybe John the Baptist and some other people who would have lived out uh, away from society. I confess there's many days where I very much sympathize with the Essene community and would like to just get off the grid for an extended period of time. The last ones were the zealots of that day. Judas Iscariot would have been a zealot, among many others. And their belief was that they needed to violently resist any kind of occupation of God's people. And so they were known to assassinate some of the civic leaders of the day. And even if we're obviously not talking about that extreme of a resistance, there are many different religious organizations today and Christian organizations that will want to be actively resisting through protesting or other means by which they want to really come up against the government. So you can investigate a lot of these different traditions. You see them pop up all throughout history about people that want to be separate from but within, or they might want to blend themselves with the government. They might want to remove and get off the grid altogether, or they will vociferously and passionately resist the government. From the human experience, I think it's really helpful when we think about social issues to recognize how quickly the conversations change in the social issues. And I think about the fact in the sexuality class that I've taught for the better part of 14 years, that in 2007, eight and nine, as I was teaching it, most of the conversations revolved around things like pornography or living together. That was what's called the sits and laban or the situation in life of the time. People were asking a lot of questions about those topics back then. 
Uh, nobody at that time was asking questions about same gender relationships. But then in about 2013, 14, 15, with the uh, advancement of gay marriage in our country and the Obergefell Amendment that made same gender marriage the law of the land, suddenly I would walk into these classes and the social situation had changed dramatically. And people were no longer asking questions as much about pornography or living together. Now everybody was asking questions about same gender relationships. More recently, it uh, moved into gender blurring and human trafficking and things just changed so fast in the social conversation. So to be a minister of the gospel is to be aware of the, the cr quickly and rapidly changing human experience where we have a lot of questions that emerge on us and, and we wonder about in the social scene that are deeply impacting people's lives. Another recent one would be critical race theory was not something that we talked about in ethics classes or in churches very much, maybe two or three years ago, if at all. And now that seems to be uh, very much the buzz of many conversations. Science and reason would be the last one that we can talk about. And that would just be, again, the idea of how do we understand ourselves still as citizens of a given country philosophically, even while our actual citizenship is in heaven? What, how do we need to participate? What does it mean to be perhaps an American? How do we understand ourselves in light of conversations about war, for example? Do we need to get involved in the educational system to, to really uh, affect and infect how schools are teaching our children? Um, what do we do with conversations uh, about social justice and how we're treating one another uh, from a legal standpoint, from, from an American legal framework that might be different than the Jewish framework, and how do we understand these things? So to become a scholar of a given country's system is really helpful for understanding then how to navigate that system as an ambassador of the kingdom. So again, looking at scripture, as a means of understanding that uh, we are citizens of heaven, looking at the long range of traditional responses about how we can do this, not one better than another. Many people have felt convicted to act in different kinds of ways. Understanding that the human experience changes substantially and becoming a student of the philosophy of a given country or culture is really helpful for carving out space in some of these difficult issues.